I'm going to say something. Some of you are going to say, I'm playing to the audience, telling people what they want to hear. I'm trying to be incendiary or provocative. If you're a longtime listener of this program, you know, with rare, rare exception, I tell you exactly what I think. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I think right now. Were the victims of Hurricane Helene in Western North Carolina black? The national news media would still be on the ground in Western North Carolina covering the storm. But because they are uh, rural, mountain, poor white people who are Trump supporters, all of the major news networks have largely moved on other than um, ancillary. In Katrina, it was a white Republican president and mostly black people displaced from their homes. And every news network did their live broadcast coverage from New Orleans for weeks. This is rural western North Carolina, where it's a bunch of white people who are Trump supporters, who are killed, dead, displaced from their homes, and instead the media has gone into damage control for Joe Biden. And if you actually look at the timeline of the storm, there's a damning indictment to be made. Now, there are lots of caveats. There are lots of caveats. I want to be as thorough with this as I possibly can. And I need to begin with Sasquatch. That's right. Bigfoot himself. Bigfoot himself. We live in a day and age where everybody has a camera phone. And no one has been able to get coverage of Bigfoot that is anything other than a, a, a far distant grainy image. In a day and age where everyone has a camera phone and every police arrest is captured on film and and uh, armchair quarterbacked by Americans on social media, the fact that no one can actually get a clear shot of Sasquatch is a pretty big tell that he doesn't exist. There are lots of videos of people staring at cameras in North Carolina telling you what's happening on the ground. Not a single one of them is showing you what's happening. We're supposed to take their word for it. For all we know, the background outside of their car is uh, the, the Kremlin. We, we have no idea. I've seen lots of footage. Uh, FEMA blocked me from going into this trash dump. Well, why, why are you show us that FEMA, by the way, it's not FEMA's job. FEMA is, is probably not doing that. FEMA's doing a lot of things. FEMA's probably not blocking access to the local trash dump because that's not where FEMA is. It's just wild that everybody's believing the stuff we're seeing on social media of these, these people looking solemnly in the camera from the car. Y'all never going to believe what just happened to me. Well, you mean you have your camera there to tell us now, but you weren't actually filming it when FEMA tried to arrest you. The FEMA arrests are like Sasquatch. They sure are a lot of people saying they're happening and ain't nobody catching it on TV. And the problem here is that because these are white Trump supporters in North Carolina, the media is already predisposed to not want to cover the story. And now you got a bunch of liars on social media lying and the media just gets to wash their hands up and say, well, they're all liars anyway. We can't believe anything. Here's what you can believe. Here's the fact. Hurricane Helene rolled through North Carolina October or September 27th. On September 28th, the fallout from the storm was massive. And it was not until October 2nd that Joe Biden signed an order mobilizing the 82nd Airborne at Fort Bragg. They did not mobilize until October 3rd. And then he mobilized more on October 5th to do specific search and rescue. So you got September 28th, September 29th, September 30th, October 1st, October 2nd, five days later, the order is signed. October 3rd, 500 troops are mobilized. October 4th, October 5th, 500 more troops are mobilized. That's eight days. How many people died in the mountains of North Carolina in those eight days? There's your scandal. It was eight days before we had full military mobilization, specifically of trained soldiers to do mountain search and rescue. 
The scandal is not that FEMA tried to arrest you because FEMA didn't try to arrest you. And that overshadows the fact that there were eight days between the storm hitting and military rescue personnel being sent to the mountains. And yes, it is absolutely true. And this is something that every single person who's upset about FEMA misses. FEMA cannot act until the governor of the state of North Carolina asks for it. Until local governments and state government ask, FEMA does not respond. FEMA is not a first responder. The first responders were the state of North Carolina and were the volunteers. And a lot of people poured into those mountains in the day after the hurricane to try to find people. But you know what they weren't? They were not military personnel trained in mountain rescue. Those people were at Fort Bragg sitting on their hands waiting Here's Tom Cotton. And again, this goes to the lies. Listen to how uh, Kristen Welker on, on NBC wants to focus on the lies so that she doesn't have to talk about the truth. And Tom Cotton does a great job here. My broader question to you, I think, is about this misinformation. Do you think this is a time to put falsehoods aside, like the idea that FEMA funds are being redirected to migrants, which is just yeah. not true? Well it is true that, that FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security have been spending billions of dollars on migrants. Now, I understand some people say they're separate funds, yeah. but we, we just passed a short-term spending bill. It's very common for the administration to come and ask for permission to move money between funds, especially to prepare for emergencies. And, and second, I, I would note that this administration seems to have no problem finding money when they want to spend it on their priorities. When they need hundreds of billions of dollars to pay off student loans for graduate students in gender studies mm -hmm. programs, they somehow find it. When yeah. it's trying to get helicopters to deliver food yeah. and water and cellular service and life-saving medicine into these mountain valleys, they somehow can't seem to find the money. Exactly right. That is exactly right. They want to focus on the FEMA funding, and by the way, uh, money was being moved around in budgets to cover illegal aliens with FEMA. It's true, even if the media has wanted to dismiss it. But somehow they could rearrange priorities to find the money for the illegal aliens, and they couldn't find the money to get the helicopters off the ground for eight days. Now, a lot was going on, and we shouldn't be dismissive of the state. We shouldn't be dismissive of the volunteers. There were a lot of people on the ground the day after the hurricane. But here's the thing. You know, you can go to the state secretary of state and say, give me a list of every registered voter in the state of North Carolina. And they're all arranged not just by county. They're arranged by mail carrier route so that you can follow the route of the mail delivery truck so that you're never crossing your path. How hard would it have been for Roy Cooper or the commander-in-chief of the American military to say, guys, break down each county, a group of you go door-to-door, -door, and you make sure those people are okay? How hard would that have been? It wouldn't have been hard at all. But it took them eight days to even begin. People were dying. And you can say, Erickson, what about the volunteers? What about the state? What about local law enforcement? You're absolutely right. They were there. But you know what? We pay taxes into this thing called the federal government. And the federal government has emergency resources for natural disasters. And the federal government took eight days to mobilize those resources. Five days initially, three more days to get search and rescue off the ground. Eight days. Roy Cooper has a lot to answer for, the governor of North Carolina. Why did it take him so long to get Joe Biden to do this? Because ultimately, the, the buck stops with Roy Cooper, not with Joe Biden, because he's the governor of the state. And natural disaster response is a state-level response. The federal government only assists at the request of the state. We had mobilization in Georgia. We had mobilization in Florida. It was quick mobilization, quick disaster preparedness, all of that. They got all the resources, but the resources at Fort Bragg or Fort Liberty sat on the ground. For eight days, the airborne with specialists in mountain search and rescue sat on their hands waiting. Why? Again, local law enforcement was engaged. The state government was engaged. There were massive numbers of volunteers engaged. But we have specialists in mountain search and rescue as part of our military, and they're stationed 
in North Carolina near this area. Shut up, Siri. And they weren't engaged. Why is that? Is it because Joe Biden was on the beach? Was it because Joe Biden couldn't be bothered? You know, my watch has lost its mind on me. There we go. Could, could it be that the president is the leader of the government and when the president is a dementia patient who doesn't know what's going on, everyone handles themselves? There's a telltale sign that no one's in charge, and it's this. While millions of Americans are complaining about the disaster response in North Carolina, the Secretary of State thought it was wise to get online and brag about the hundreds of millions of dollars we're sending to Lebanon. And Samantha Powers at the USAID decided she would get online and brag about the billions of dollars we're sending to Ukraine to keep the power running while the power was out of North Carolina. On the same day Americans are beginning to complain about FEMA and the federal government response, they decide that's a good idea. That's a sign there's no leadership at the top. There is no leadership in this White House. The man is out to lunch, and no one in the media wants to ask tough questions. And the toughest question is this, and it's the one they don't want to ask. If the specialists in mountain rescue were mobilized the day after the hurricane, how many of the dead people in western North Carolina would be alive right now? They don't want to ask that question. In fact, they want to shout at you for even asking the question. But if the victims were black and the president were a Republican, every damn member of the American press corps would be asking that question.